15 strange laws and customs in New Zealand. Building fences out of underwear, an obsession with giants and naming things up to 58 characters long, these crazy things exist nowhere else in the world but in New Zealand. We often hear about the breathtaking beauty that nature has bestowed upon this land, but that's not all the regulations, customs and unique aspects of life in New Zealand also make this nation incredibly special in the eyes of the outside world. And in this video we'll explore 15 prohibitions and peculiarities that only exist in New Zealand. Let's brace yourself, as this video contains quite a few shocking details. Number 15. Don't show up empty-handed to a gathering or party. Even if you're a foreigner just stepping foot in New Zealand, whenever invited to any gathering, never show up empty-handed. You should bring food or wine to share. It's an essential part of the hospitality culture in this country. Even if there are no specific requests to bring something, bringing a small gift is still an expression of respect and appreciation for the host. This not only helps create a comfortable and welcoming atmosphere, but also shows your gratitude for the invitation and the host's care. However, if the host requests not to bring anything, you should respect that request and refrain from bringing a gift. In this case, understanding and adhering to the host's rules and requests are crucial for maintaining a good relationship. Number 14. Greeting by pressing noses. Apart from bringing gifts, be prepared to press noses with the host and others present, as New Zealanders in general, and Maori people in particular, often greet each other in this peculiar way. Instead of handshakes or hugs, Maori people always take quite a long time to get acquainted with guests. The somewhat intimidating and meticulously probing gestures of Maori people can confuse visitors. However, once you're their guest, everyone is warmly welcomed, entertained with lively songs, dances, and delicious food. Firstly, when entering a Maori village or house, you'll encounter a warrior standing right in front, eagerly brandishing a spear or staff and performing martial arts moves. They point the sharp tips at you, executing defensive maneuvers attacks, and shouting loudly as if calling the whole village, which can make you feel uneasy. Then they place a fern branch on the ground and point the spear at it, signaling for you to pick it up from a very close distance. Of course you'll have to choose between two options picking up the branch and handing it to them, or fleeing. If you pick it up with a friendly attitude, you'll be invited inside and immediately welcomed by dancing women. But if you follow them with rude, arrogant gestures, according to ancient customs, the consequences are dire because you'll be tied up, escorted into the village. After enjoying the festive dance and songs, the host will formally greet you. Maori people have a common guest greeting style called hongi, where both faces press against each other, foreheads touching and noses rubbing. It's called the nose pressing greeting and is gender neutral. Regardless of age, wealth, everyone rubs noses, even politicians, no matter how reluctant, must perform the hongi as Maori people don't shake hands or kiss cheeks. So if you visit these people's homes, be prepared to press noses. Number 13. Avoid comparisons with Australia. All right, you may have visited Australia and formed a favorable impression of the country, but when in New Zealand, never mention Australia in front of the locals, they will give you hostile looks if they overhear it. New Zealanders and Australians often don't view each other positively on many fronts. The relationship between New Zealand and Australia is quite complex and often not seen as entirely friendly in all aspects. Although these two countries share many similarities, there are also clear differences, both culturally, historically, and politically. In communicating with New Zealanders and Australians, it's important to avoid direct comparisons between the two countries and refrain from stating that New Zealand and Australia are one nation. This is crucial to avoid eliciting negative reactions or alienating the listeners. So absolutely refrain from joking, comparing these two countries in any form, and never say New Zealand and Australia are one nation. Number 12. Prohibition on criticizing Maori culture. When in New Zealand, the first thing you must always remember is never to speak ill of Maori culture. In case you didn't know, Maori people are the indigenous people of New Zealand and their culture shapes the country in many ways. They arrived here over 1,000 years ago from their mythical homeland of Hawaii in Polynesia. Today, for every seven New Zealanders, there is one Maori person. Maori people have created a beautiful language, remarkable myths, arts, and many distinctive aspects of their culture. Their myths are passed down orally through generations, telling of their creativity in discovering new lands. Even if you only skim through these facts, it will help you understand and respect Maori customs as well as interact with Maori culture. 
one of the best ways to start doing this is to avoid criticism. This is because complaining or criticizing is seen as a form of religious discrimination from the perspective of the New Zealand people. Number 11. The world's thinnest population. If you venture away from the cities in New Zealand, you might feel extremely lonely because the roads are always deserted. The reason for this is that New Zealand is one of the world's thinnest populated countries with a total population of over 4.7 million people. This is equivalent to only 17.5 people per square kilometer. The remote geography of the island's rugged terrain has deterred many from settling in this country. The low population density creates a comfortable living environment with less pollution for residents, as well as providing many opportunities for exploring and enjoying nature. With to the advantage of a low population, New Zealand is the habitat for many animal species, including many unique species named after fruits. Number 10. Underwear fence. If you find the kiwi species not bizarre enough, then head to Otago where you'll see one of New Zealand's strangest things that's the underwear fence. The world's one-of-a-kind fence is called the Cardrona Bra Fence located in the central Otago region. Women's bras have been hung on the fence since the 1990s, but no one knows the exact origin of it. Whether true or not, there's an interesting story circulating that during the Christmas and New Year celebration in 1999, four unidentified women partied at the Cardrona Hotel and left the nightclub intoxicated. On a whim, all four decided to take off their bras and hang them on the fence as a New Year's greeting. In the following years, the number of bras increased. However, not everyone is pleased with this sight. Some find it overly tacky, sometimes obscene, and are concerned it could pose a threat to drivers passing by. Because of this, the bras have been removed from the fence several times. However, somehow after each cleaning, more bras appear. In 2006, local authorities intervened, deciding to remove over 1,500 bras from the fence. But shortly after, new bras boldly appeared again. Finally, people decided to keep the scene intact. According to the locals, since the fence has been here, their livelihoods have become easier, and tourism in this remote area has begun to develop. At its peak, the fence once broke records by collecting over 100,000 bras. Number 9. Obsession with big things. It may sound crude, but towns in New Zealand genuinely want to showcase their presence by displaying large sculptures to let people know what they're famous for. There's a giant kiwi fruit in Te Puke, a giant kiwi bird in Otorohanga, a giant soft drink bottle in Peroa, and even a giant donut in Springfield. There are so many of these large sculptures that we've compiled a whole list dedicated to them. These large sculptures are not only local landmarks but also part of New Zealand's tourism culture. They create unique focal points and attract the attention of visitors from all over the world. Having a dedicated list for these large sculptures is an interesting way to promote New Zealand's culture and tourism. Each sculpture carries a special significance and tells a unique story about the land and the local community. This also creates an engaging tourist experience as they can wander around and explore these unique pieces of art. In summary, displaying these large sculptures is an important part of New Zealand's culture and tourism, helping towns and local areas showcase individuality and attract tourist attention. Number 8. No eating before being blessed. If you think just not speaking ill of Maori culture will keep you out of trouble, you're entirely wrong. Once you set foot here, all your actions must comply with Maori customs, especially when it comes to dining. From hangi, the traditional Maori method of cooking food in an earth oven, to beachside picnics, sharing food is a way New Zealanders bond with each other. When sitting down to eat, instinctively you might want to dig in right away. However, when in New Zealand you should refrain from doing so until the food has been blessed or a karakia prayer has been said. Additionally, New Zealanders believe that tables are meant solely for holding food, so you should avoid sitting or placing bags on the table as it's considered disrespectful. I know it all sounds quite intricate, but happily learn and abide by it to avoid bigger troubles. Number 7. No tipping. While tipping waitstaff at cafes, restaurants or shops is common practice in most countries, New Zealand is an exception. This practice is not common and even considered impolite in some cases. This is because staff are paid wages with the expectation that they won't receive any tips from customers, as tipping is a habit that New Zealanders typically try to avoid when starting out in New Zealand. This reflects one of the core values of New Zealand society regarding fairness and respect for everyone's work. 
However, if there's a desire to express special appreciation for good service, people often choose alternative ways such as leaving compliments or returning to the store or cafe next time. Number 6. No bragging the treasure. Oh, you may be very wealthy and successful, but if you come to New Zealand, please don't talk about the wealth you possess. It's actually quite foolish in the eyes of the locals here. Following the New Zealand culture, constantly interrupting conversations or monopolizing them to boast about your achievements is considered impolite. Listening to and respecting others' opinions is also an important part of effective communication in New Zealand culture. This is often considered more important than self-praise or appearing proud. So be mindful of this when engaging in conversations, especially if the topic leads to a potential opportunity for you to boast about an achievement. While you may not intend to brag, it could come across differently, so be careful. Number 5. No criticizing rugby. You may not have a fondness for contact sports with a bit of violence, but regardless, don't open your mouth to criticize rugby while standing on New Zealand soil. Rugby is one of the biggest sports in New Zealand. Seen not just as a game, it's become a cornerstone of the nation's sports and has a significant influence on New Zealand's life and culture. I want to emphasize that whether you're a rugby fan or not, be cautious in your choice of words when talking about this sport or comparing it to others as it can upset passionate New Zealand rugby fans. The national rugby team of New Zealand is called the All Blacks, winning the Rugby World Cup the most times with three titles in 1987, 2011 and 2015. The All Blacks also consistently rank first in the world rankings. Currently, New Zealand is also ranked number one in the world rugby rankings, and clearly they deserve those praises. Number four, kiwi is not a fruit. Kiwi is a type of fruit originating from New Zealand, but in this country, when you mention kiwi, people will immediately think of an incredibly cute creature rather than the fruit that comes from their land. This creature is none other than the extremely rare and precious kiwi bird. Kiwi is not only a distinctive bird of New Zealand, but also the national symbol of this country. The image of the kiwi is often used in various contexts, from national emblems to decorations and tourist products. The kiwi bird cannot fly with a size similar to that of a chicken, standing about 51 centimeters tall and weighing up to one kilograms. Females are larger than males. Kiwi birds have unique grey-brown feathers, with whiskers around their beaks acting as tactile organs. Unlike other bird species, the kiwi has a long beak with its nostrils at the tip. It uses this beak to dig into the ground and find food. Kiwis have a keen sense of smell but very poor eyesight. At night, their vision extends only 1.8 meters, and during the day, it's less than 1 meter. With limited vision, peculiar appearance and boundless curiosity, it's no surprise that this bird is consistently on the list of the most endangered species. The government is still striving to protect them, but if you come to New Zealand, try to find a way to take pictures with them, as it's very likely that in a few years, we won't be able to see these creatures anymore. Number three, three official languages. Usually, each country selects one language as its official language, but New Zealand chooses up to three languages to represent their nation. The three main languages are English, Maori, and New Zealand Sign Language. Nowadays, the officially recognized language of New Zealand is English, or English is essentially the language of New Zealand. Because almost all the people here use English to communicate, making English more prevalent. English is used anywhere in this country, being the most common language used in New Zealand. However, in the past, the official language of this country was Maori. However, this language has struggled to survive against English because it is used less and less. To maintain and preserve the traditional language, the New Zealand government continually encourages people to use the Maori language by incorporating it into media and schools. Some place names and locations in New Zealand, such as Wanhunga or Nguru, still use the Maori language. It's estimated that around 130,000 New Zealanders still use Maori every day. Meanwhile, New Zealand Sign Language is the language of the deaf community in New Zealand, widely used in the deaf community and by many hearing people. Number 2. Sheep everywhere. In New Zealand, whether in the plains or on the foothills, you'll see images of men leisurely riding horses herding flocks of sheep back to the farm. It's described that you have to take a plane to fully see the beauty and strange allure of this land of sheep. Currently, there are over 46 million sheep estimated to be in sheep farms in New Zealand. Each flock has about 10,000 sheep, and the most popular breed is Romney because they are highly productive in reproduction, meat and wool. 
New Zealand thus produces up to 11% of the world's total wool output and is the world's largest producer of coarse wool. Because of the importance of sheep to this country, they have become involved in many daily activities such as appearing in songs, dances, cuisine, textiles, scientific research, and even as pets. New Zealanders believe that sheep are the cleanest, gentlest, and most approachable animals, so many people raise them as pets. When talking about sheep, people also immediately think of skilled sheep shearers whom the locals often call Kiwi shearers, sharing the same name with the rare and precious Kiwi bird. Currently, there are about 2,000 Kiwi shearers working in various locations in New Zealand. With a 20 centimeters long sheep's fleece, they can shear it in one smooth stroke. If you happen to be here during sheep shearing season, you might experience it yourself. Who knows, you might be kept working for your dexterity. Number 1. Filming Paradise the Lord of the Rings series with its magnificent and breathtaking scenes in New Zealand has greatly boosted the allure of tourism in this place. Impressive scenes at locations such as Hobbiton, Mount Doom, Fjordland National Park and others have become an integral part of the movie watching experience. The beautiful images of New Zealand have created a mesmerizing image of this country in the minds of many people around the world. Thanks to the fame of this series, tourism in New Zealand has become an attractive destination for those who want to explore the natural beauty and unique culture of this country. Visiting the famous locations in the Lord of the Rings has become an unmissable experience for fans of the series and travelers who want to enjoy the special beauty of New Zealand. And those are 15 prohibitions and peculiar things in New Zealand. Let's go on an adventurous journey together as we enter a world full of mystery and mystery, taking us from New Zealand to Poland. Here we will witness strange facts and ancient secrets that people have only heard about in legends. From enchanting stories of the past to mysterious modern phenomena, every perspective opens up a world full of mysteries. Come join us on this adventure as we enter a land of mystery and mystery, where the lines between reality and legend become blurred. We will discover and enjoy unexplained miracles, creating a beautiful picture of the diversity and magic of the world in which we live. 33 weird facts only exist in Poland. Poland is a sovereign country in Central Europe, bordered by Germany, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, Russia, and the Baltic Sea. Poland harbors many strange phenomena. Donuts here don't have holes. There's a house that looks photoshopped. It's home to a four, double zero strong dwarf army, and it's the birthplace of vodka, among other curiosities. Let's explore 33 fascinating facts about Poland, including surprising truths about famous figures from Poland that will surely leave you astonished. Number 33, the infamous haunted forest in Poland. When it comes to pine trees, people often think of the straight posture of these towering trees. However, in the Krozyuai Las Forest, also known as the Crooked Forest, located on the outskirts of Nauzanowo City, West Pomerania, Poland, Te a completely contrasting scene will catch the eye of those who have the opportunity to set foot here when the pine trees are uniquely bent into J-shaped curves, which are extremely peculiar and strange. However, this number of trees only accounts for a small corner of the forest, with about 400 trees, all uniformly bent at a 90-degree angle to the north and nestled among the straight-growing pine forest. To this day, no one has provided an accurate answer to the mutation of these pine trees, why they are bent into such quirky yet fascinating shapes. It's all just speculation and woven to enhance the mystical and intriguing allure of the crooked forest. The mysterious Krasuelas forest is the only place on earth where such peculiar pine trees appear. What do you think about this pine forest? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Number 32. Vodka originates from Poland. Many believe that vodka originates from Poland. Initially used as medicine, vodka production in Poland dates to medieval times. Even today, the Polish continue to produce some of the finest vodka globally, with an annual output of around 260 million liters. If you visit Poland, be sure to sample its renowned vodka. Number 31. Poland isn't just about vodka. While Poland is famous for vodka, there's more to Polish beverages than meets the eye. For example, beer. Poland consistently ranks in the top 10 regions with the highest beer consumption globally. Polish beer is exceptionally delicious, with brands like Zwijek and Tyski leading the pack. Unlike neighboring Germany and the Czech Republic, drinking alcohol in public is prohibited in Poland. Additionally, you can try kompot, a non-alcoholic sweet beverage, served hot or cold, depending on tradition and weather. 
Number 30. Every spring, Poles kill dolls. You might be surprised, even horrified, to visit Poland in the spring and witness locals killing their dolls, but don't worry this is just one of the intriguing aspects of Poland. In reality, it's a long-standing tradition. At the end of winter, life-size dolls called Marzana by the Poles are created to be ceremoniously disposed of as spring begins. It's how the Polish bid farewell to winter. Number 29. The Enchanting Crooked House in Poland. In Poland, it's not just trees that are crooked, there are also crooked houses. Located on Monte Cassino Street in the city of Sopot, Poland, with three floors and a total area of 4,000 square meters, the Crazy Wee Domek Crooked House is part of the famous Resident Shopping Center. Like any other building, Crazy Wee Domek is made of concrete and steel, but with the architect's creativity, anyone setting foot here would feel like they're in a hallucination. Why? Because Crazy Wee Domek is a crooked house and seeing it with your own eyes, you'll exclaim that it's truly an extraordinary building. Perhaps tired of ordinary, mundane designs, the builders here made the building exquisitely warped. From walls, windows, gates to the roof, everything seems distorted. Some initially thought it was a photoshopped trick until they stood face to face with Crazy Weed Domek. Number 28. Dwarf Army in Poland. The city of Roklo in Poland is renowned for its tourist attractions, including vast squares, beautiful historic houses and majestic churches. But hidden beneath, near the ground level, on sidewalks and around corners, lies an entirely different attraction, requiring meticulous observation for one to appreciate fully. That attraction is an army. Of 400 dwarf statues, no taller than 15 centimeters, scattered under benches, sleeping on windowsills, and lounging in the city's parks. These small bronze dwarf statues are present all over the city. Hunting for these charming creatures has become a delightful pastime for tourists and locals alike. Stay long enough and you might stumble upon an entire society of dwarves including merchants, bankers, buskers, professors and mailmen. There's a doctor with a tiny stethoscope, a gardener pushing a small wheelbarrow, and a dentist extracting tiny teeth. One is napping by the hotel, two are kissing in front of the marriage registration office, and 19 are performing a symphony for dwarves outside the city's concert hall. What do you think about these adorable dwarf statues? Feel free to leave a comment below. Number 27. Poles highly respect the number three. The number three holds significant symbolism in Polish culture, representing luck and magic. You'll find the love for the number three in Polish folklore, where the rule of three is often applied, such as with three tasks, three characters, or three characters, or three goals. Number 26. Interesting Christmas customs in Poland. Polish people often eat carp on Christmas Eve for good luck. Most will buy carp directly from the market. However, some still uphold the tradition of raising carp in bathtubs a few days before the holiday. The Christmas Eve dinner in Poland called Wigilia begins when the first star appears in the sky. In the winter in Poland, the evenings are often dark. Therefore, Christmas Eve dinner can start as early as four or five in the evening. During the Christmas Eve dinner, Polish families leave an empty seat at the dining table. According to tradition, this seat is reserved for unexpected guests it doesn't necessarily have to be relatives or friends, but could be anyone in need of hospitality on this day. Traditional dishes for this day include mushrooms, beet soup, pierogi, herring, and many more. What do you think about Polish Christmas customs like this? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Number 25. Poland is the only European country that never formally collaborated with Nazi Germany. Would you believe that Poland is the only European country that never formally collaborated with Nazi Germany at any level and no Polish units fought alongside the Nazi German military? Poland has never formally surrendered to Germany and the resistance movements in Poland during the German occupation in World War II were the largest resistance movements in Europe. Number 24. Higher education is free in Poland. Higher education in Poland is free for Polish citizens. International students often pay very low tuition fees to study in Poland. The oldest university in Poland is the Jagiellonia University, established by King Casimir III in 1364. Number 23. Polish television uses dubbing instead of subtitles. You won't find subtitles on Polish television. When watching an English language film on TV, the English remains in the film but at a lower volume. Moreover, all foreign films and series in Poland are dubbed by a single man. This applies to all characters, including women and children. 
Have you watched any TV programs in Poland? Share your thoughts about them in the comments. Number 22. Poland is the world's largest amber exporter. Poland boasts abundant reserves of amber, making souvenir items and jewelry crafted here exceptionally splendid and glamorous. You'd want to own them if you ever get the chance to travel here. Number 21. Poles marry youngest in Europe. One of the most interesting facts about Poland is that Poles get married on average at the age of 25 to 27. This is younger than in any other European Union country, so if you befriend any Polish individuals over 20 who are in stable relationships, start preparing to attend a wedding in Poland. Number 20. Euro currency is not used in Poland. Despite being in the European Union, Poland doesn't use the euro currency. The national currency in Poland is the zloty. While a few restaurants or hotels might accept euros or dollars, ATMs and currency exchange counters are widespread, so you can easily handle transactions with the local currency. Number 19. Polish Constitution ranks second in the world. Poland adopted its first written constitution in the spring of 1791, making it the second valid legal document in the world. However, it was effective for only 14 months and three weeks before Poland was partitioned for over 100 years. Number 18. Poland has the first upside-down house in the world. Poland is home to the world's first upside-down house. This upside-down wooden house was originally built in a forest, resembling something out of a fairy tale. Visitors enter through the roof window and explore the fully furnished house, reminiscent of Polish homes in the 1970s. Hundreds of curious tourists have visited since its inauguration in 2007, and you can find this house in the tiny village of Simbark in Poland, a place with only about 500 residents. Number 17. Donuts in Poland have no holes. Do any of you like eating donuts? Comment below. If you're used to donuts with holes, you'll find it strange to eat donuts in Poland because they have no holes. Poles find flat, hole-less fried pastries quite peculiar. Therefore, when in Poland, don't expect to find donuts with holes here. Donuts in Poland are always round with a layer of glaze on top. It could be orange marmalade, rose marmalade, or other fruit flavors. Poland also has an interesting holiday called Tlusty Suortek, which means Fat Thursday. On this day, you can eat as many donuts as you like. People often ask each other how many donuts they've eaten. The tradition is the more you eat, the luckier you'll be. Number 16. Poland has one of the oldest restaurants in Europe. Punica Swidnica is a restaurant located in the basement of the historic Roklaw City Hall, classified as a historical monument in Poland. The restaurant has been open since after 1273, making it the oldest restaurant in Poland and one of the oldest in Europe. You can make reservations and enjoy meals at this restaurant, so consider visiting when you're in Poland. Number 15. Poland is a paradise for storks. Can you believe that nearly one quarter of all white storks in the world live and nest in Poland during the spring? Every year in spring, 25% of the total species of these birds fly to Poland. Poles love storks. In many places, they are encouraged to build nests on frames on rooftops or poles near farms. Locals believe that stork nests bring luck, protecting homes from fires or lightning strikes. There's a particular place where these birds like to stay. That's Ziwakowa a small village half a kilometer from the Poland-Russia border called the Stork Capital. It's the home of 120 storks, nearly four times the number of people living there. Additionally, Poland is also home to black storks. They build their nests in forests on tall tree branches and on mountains or rocks. Number 14. Poland is famous for sausages. Sausages in Poland are exceptionally delicious, especially the kielbasa sausage. Kielbasa is a renowned sausage in Eastern European countries like Poland, Ukraine, etc. It's mainly made from pork, garlic, pepper, salt, sugar, and a traditional Polish cabbage finely ground. Therefore, kielbasa sausages have a very distinctive and special aroma. Has anyone tasted the flavor of kielbasa sausage yet? Share your thoughts below. Number 13. Poland's Rich Cuisine Let's explore Poland's culinary masterpieces together. This country not only has famous sausages, but also some very special dishes. Have you heard of pierogi? These delicious stuffed dumplings are a must try when visiting Poland. They're so beloved that the city of Krakow even holds an annual pierogi festival. 
Besides, when in Poland, you must try bigos. This dish almost always ranks first in the list of the country's most characteristic dishes. Its appearance may not be eye-catching, but its taste leaves an unforgettable impression. Bigos is made from stewed meat, sausage simmered with sauerkraut, honey added with a little cinnamon and cloves to create a fragrant flavor for the dish. All ingredients are stewed tender and eaten with round bread. Zrezi is also a traditional characteristic dish of the Polish people, not only present at major festivals but also daily in the lives of the people. The main ingredients of Zrezi include smoked meat, breadcrumbs, mushrooms and pickles, then all this mixture will be wrapped in a thin slice of beef. It's inside, alluring with smoked meat, breadcrumbs, mushrooms and pickles. Zrezi can be steamed, fried or grilled according to taste, but all have a very delicious flavor. Poland has many other delicious dishes such as Golabki, Kotlet, Shabowy, Klodnik, you can visit this country to try them out. Number 12. Poland did not exist on the map for 123 years. Poland returned to the map after World War II, after being divided three times by Russia, Prussia, and Austria. That means it took 123 difficult years for this country to reappear on the world map. Number 11. Polish is extremely difficult. In general, learning some basic greetings when visiting a new country will be quite simple, and of course Poland is no exception. However, Polish is not an easy language to learn, and sometimes you will find it extremely difficult to pronounce, instead focusing on Polish pronunciation. Polish is spoken by about 40 million people worldwide and is famous as one of the most difficult languages for English speakers to learn. The reason is the large number of complex grammar and pronunciation. You may find it much easier to ask a native speaker how to say sorry in Polish than to try to pronounce praza prazem. So the simplest and quickest way for you is to ask the native speaker directly. You will learn very quickly by watching. Number 10. English is common in Poland. In Poland, English is the second most common language. It is taught in schools and almost anyone working in the tourism industry of a major city speaks English fairly well. You may not communicate in English in small towns or old neighborhoods, but rest assured, you will be fine with many English-speaking tourists in major tourist areas. Many people, when asked in English, will pretend not to understand or hesitate to reveal their accent. You may hear the phrase, sorry for my terrible English quite often, even though they speak English better than you speak Polish. Number 9. Poland has beaches, mountains, forests, deserts, and lakes. Poland has rich natural landscapes, nearly 800 kilometers of coastline and some magnificent mountain ranges such as Tatra, Carpathian, Sudet Bieszk Sadi, and Suita Krasiski. Poland has the only desert in Central Europe called Pustynia Bladowska. The sandbanks in the Pomeranian region, the marshy lands in the Bibzanski National Park, and the islands in the Wolin National Park are all special attractions in Europe. These landscapes are sure to captivate you when you admire them. Number 8. Poland owns the oldest salt mines in the world. When visiting Poland, don't forget to visit the 800-year-old Wielicka salt mine, one of the oldest salt mines in the world. It is famous as Poland's underground salt mine, and you will see rooms, sculptures, salt chandeliers, and the entire chapel carved from salt rock. This UNESCO World Heritage Site has been producing salt continuously since the 13th century until 2007, and you will surely be surprised by the history as well as the unique carvings of this salt mine. Number 7. Poland has the largest castle in the world. Poland boasts 16 impressive UNESCO World Heritage Sites, including the castle with the largest land area in the world, Malbork. The Teutonic Order's castle in Malbork is the largest castle in the world in terms of land area. It was built in the 13th century and has become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Poland not only owns the Teutonic Order's castle but also is home to 15 other UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Number 6. Europe's largest animals live in Poland. The vast primeval forest covering 150,000 hectares is the Bielowieza forest in Poland, the only ancient forest still existing in Europe. It is home to about 800 European bison. These are also the largest land animals in Europe. Number 5. Poland's name comes from the Polony tribe. The name of this country comes from the Polony tribe, meaning people living in open fields. This is truly a fitting name for a country with vast and beautiful fields. Number 4. 
During World War II, Warsaw was almost completely destroyed and had to be completely rebuilt. The bustling city of Warsaw is called Phoenix City because it has survived through many wars throughout history despite severe destruction. Now the landscapes in Warsaw are not the same as the old town before the war. Warsaw streets now no longer have their original appearance because they were bombed in the 1940s. Afterward, Warsaw was rebuilt using famous paintings of the city by Bernardo Bellotto. Number 3. Poland is the largest apple exporter in the world. Poland loves its apples. In fact, in 2020, Poland was the largest apple exporter in the world, contributing to nearly 25% of the global apple export volume. Grojis is dubbed the land of the largest apples in Poland, with vast apple orchards. Has anyone tasted Polish apples yet? Share your thoughts on the flavor of these apples below. Number 2. Marie Curie is actually Polish. Here everyone knows the famous scientist Marie Curie, right? Did you know Marie Curie is Polish? Marie Curie, the woman who discovered polonium and radium, was originally Polish, not French. Her name was Marie Sklodowska before she married a Frenchman named Pierre Curie. She is the only woman to win a Nobel Prize and the only person to win this award in two different scientific fields. Number 1. Poland may be the birthplace of many famous figures. Poland is the homeland of many famous figures, including the physicist and chemist who changed the world, Marie Curie, legendary film director Roman Polanski, and Pope John Paul II. In addition, Frederick Francois Chopin is the most famous composer in Poland. Chopin was born in Zelazowa Wola, Poland, in 1810. The International Friedrich Chopin Piano Competition is one of the oldest music competitions in the world, established by Polish professor Jerzy Zorawiu. Furthermore, Polish writer Stanislaw Lem is known as one of the greatest science fiction writers in the world. His novel Solaris was adapted into a film in 2002. Another very famous person is Nicolaus Copernicus, the renowned astronomer, a Pole who was born in Tauron. He established the concept of heliocentrism, proposing that the Sun is at the center of the universe rather than the Earth. Finally, the great writer Joseph Conrad is actually Polish, and his full name is Teodor Józef Konrad Nalek Skordzeniowski. Do you know any other famous figures from Poland? Comment below to share. So, we have explored 33 strange facts about the country of Poland. What do you think about the facts I shared above or have you visited this beautiful and interesting country yet? Like me, I'm quite impressed with the dwarf army in Poland. Remember to comment to share your thoughts with me. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay updated with the latest videos from us. See you in the next videos.